Hey, what's up guys? My name is Thomas Park and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Brave, 10 reasons why you should use it, why it's the best browser out there. Hey guys, just a reminder to check out vpntierlist.com. It's a collection of all my ratings on the channel and you're going to find lots of helpful information here on how to choose a VPN. Anyways, back to the video. So number one guys is, is that Brave is really cool in that it supports content creators and it's kind of sort of revolutionized the way online ads work. Now on my YouTube channel, honestly, the ad revenue is a pretty low part. And in fact, this month due to COVID and other things, my revenue has decreased pretty much by 40%. So things like Brave are really cool because if you download Brave by going to brave.com slash Tom352, if you download and install it, I can make five bucks. That doesn't sound like a lot, but it really does add up. And it's really cool because it doesn't require you to spend anything. It makes a way for me to generate revenue for my channel and keep making content. And you can even earn money on Brave as well by watching the served up ads they have on the platform that don't compromise your privacy. So I think one of the coolest things about Brave is that it is kind of revolutionizing the ad space to be more privacy friendly, to be friendly for content creators. Basically, they only serve up ads that don't jeopardize your privacy. They don't have targeted ads either. So that's a really cool feature of Brave and honestly, one of the coolest things about it. So if you wanna support the channel, you can either donate to me with Brave or you can just go to brave.com slash Tom352 and it will help the channel grow. Now, some people might argue, well, Firefox is free as well and it's also a nonprofit, so it has a good backbone there as well. But honestly, Firefox doesn't have anything close to the way Brave is doing this with ads or supporting content creators online. It's just kind of its own little thing and it, it kind of is proud of that. But I honestly think that Brave's way of doing it is kind of better for the overall ecosystem of the internet itself and presents an interesting future where people can just kind of thrive on the internet and make some money having a good relationship with advertisers. The second thing about Brave that is really cool is that it has a native dark mode. This is a really nice feature and you can easily turn it on by doing this. So pretty much you're gonna go into the settings, you're gonna find the three bars on the top of Brave, click on that, and then you're going to go to Appearance. Go ahead and go to Appearance, and then switch Brave to Dark Mode, Light Mode, or the same appearance as Windows. So that's a really cool option. You can also configure your themes, configure the way the Home button is, if you wanna disable or show it, as well as kind of change the different look and feel of the interface itself with font sizes and page sizes well i do like that it has dark mode though and even on ios and android it also has dark mode as well which is really nice to see dark mode on mobile is always a big plus so another cool thing about brave is that it has a really cool sync feature so you can sync your desktop and your mobile phone to have the same bookmarks and stuff like that and it's even got a really cool feature on how to sync it's kind of done through like a sync code so it's not necessarily like you're making an account like a google account or anything like that but it's actually pretty cool how it works and a very nice feature for people who are hopping back and forth and want to carry over the same, same bookmarks and stuff like that. Probably one of the things that Brave is most famous for is its built-in ad blocking and anti-tracking kind of capabilities. Now with things like Firefox and some other browsers, you're going to have to install like five or six plugins. And that's honestly a pain in the butt. Not only that, but you're going to have to configure them, mess around with them and stuff like that. And Brave, no questions asked, is the best pre-built ad blocking it and ad anti-ad tracking browser there is. Because it just comes with so much control and capabilities. Um, I really like it because it's super easy to use. A lot of times you'll be installing different extensions, you can't figure out which one's the best. And a lot of times they kind of have different abilities not to work with each other. So Brave, you don't really have to worry about any of that. It just has really good shields and anti um, ads and blocking integrated within. You could customize the view of it if it's simple or an advanced view to view the trackers. You could block cross-site trackers, upgrade connections to HTTPS. You could even block scripts if you want to. And that's like an entirely separate add-on itself and other browsers like Firefox. You can also block cookies, device recognition, social media blocking. You could configure the search engine to natively go to something like DuckDuckGo, which is probably more secure if you don't want to deal with Google. You can also configure some other extensions as well, like the ability Hangouts to stop and enable screen sharing and stuff like that. So overall, I think Brave has really good ad blocking and stuff like that. One thing I do like about Brave 
is that sometimes when I go into a site, I could, tend, could tell that it's acting a little funky or something like that. So all I have to do is go up on the top, click on the little brave icon and disable the ad blocking or whatever feature and then the site will work good. Sometimes this is a problem with sites that you need to access live chat that pop up or something like that. So with Brave, it's like, I don't really have to worry about the other applications messing anything up. It's like, oh, if this site isn't working, I'll just turn off the Brave thing and we're pretty much good to go. Another really cool thing about Brave is that it has built-in torrent capabilities. You might not have known this, but it's a really cool feature. So you don't even have to have Qubit torrent, uTorrent, or anything like that. Pretty much what it's called is WebTorrent. So you just enable that, and as soon as you download a torrent magnet link, it's just going to open up another tab and start downloading it and then put it on a folder on your computer. This is really handy, really nice feature to have, and honestly, I haven't really seen it in any other browsers. Another really cool feature about Brave is that it has private integration with Tor. So if you wanna start a new tab with a Tor network, this is something that you could do very easily. All you do is click on the little three symbol icon in the top, click new private window with Tor, and this is what happens. So you can automatically use Tor this way. This is a great way to surf the internet more anonymously, especially if you have a VPN active or something like that. So this way you're gonna be able to hide your IP address and route your browsing history through several Tor servers. And this is really good to hide stuff from your employee, your ISP, governments, etc. Now it can slow down browsing on a lot of websites. So that's kind of like con compared to VPNs and some websites might not work at all. Not only that, but if you're creating accounts on sites like Reddit, they might automatically flag it and kind of delete your account. <laughs> so just be careful when you're using Tor because it does have some real cons that a lot of people don't really talk about. Some other cool things specifically for mobile are that Brave has really good bottom navigation, which means that when you're using it on your device, it's very easy to switch between tabs and stuff like that. Not every browser has bottom navigation for mobile, so that's an important feature people like. And as well, it has easy autofill integration with um, password managers on mobile, which is really important because you don't want to have to be fiddling with all those passwords. Now, I also wanted to kind of introduce some studies into this uh, video where they have found that Brave is better than other browsers. So this article was finding that Brave has the best privacy out of any of the browsers, even compared to something like Firefox. It says that Brave gets a top class all to itself, the number one ranking for the most private browser, because it uses what the study calls ephemeral identifiers that link a handful of transmissions and then reset. This means that it doesn't remember your identifier across active browser restarts. Now, Safari, Firefox, and Chrome are actually all lumped together in the second place because these browsers do share some privacy issues, including auto-tagging each browser instance with a unique session and browser instance identifier that can persist across restarts. These behaviors can be disabled, but they're turned on silently by default. So again, Brave just kind of comes ready to use, ready to go. And these other browsers require a lot of configuration and fiddling around with, which is just kind of a waste of time. Not only that, but the research picks out four identifiers that Firefox uses. Two created by the browser persist across browser restarts, while the third changes between browser sessions but could be linked together because all the new values are sent together in a telemetry message. The fourth identifier created by the server is associated with the open web socket used for Firefox's push services. Firefox also sends user IP addresses with these identifiers. Now the paper also acknowledges that Mo Mozilla deletes the IP addresses sent with these identifiers after 30 days, but he's still worried that the company is silent on the users of what the IP data is put. He thinks that this could be used to track user location. That doesn't mean it happens, but the potential still exists. Another thing that I thought was interesting is that Brave seems to be faster than other browsers. Taking a look at this one that Brave made, it showed that Chrome took almost like 7 seconds to load CNN, Brave only took 2.55 seconds, and Firefox took almost 8 seconds. So the fact that Brave is 3 times faster is not a joke, and a lot of times people say, oh well, you know, it might be faster, but what's a couple seconds here and there? Well, honestly, if you told me that Brave took only 2.55 seconds and Firefox almost took 8 seconds, well that's like almost 4 times as fast and that really does add up and it makes a difference when you're browsing. So the fact that it's faster, I think a lot of people discount for that and they don't really account for it and I think it's one of the most important reasons to use Brave is that it is fast. Another reason that I like using Brave and probably the last one on this list is that Brave natively blocks ads on mobile platforms. 
So a lot of times on your mobile device, you can't really configure a browser or add add-ons and the extensions and stuff like that. So you just want to download something that blocks the ads and stuff like that. Well, Brave is going to pretty much do that for you there. All right, guys, that pretty much sums it up for this video. If you want to see me do a more direct comparison between Brave and other browsers, let me know down in the comments down below. I'll be happy to do that. Um, this is just an overview of some of the best reasons why to use Brave, why I think it's an excellent browser to use both on PC and mobile uh, devices. Anyways, guys, thanks for checking out this video, and I'll see you again very soon.